welcome back. Uh, the Bronx is filled with rich Native American cultural history, and the organization Tapatian has partnered up with the Bronx River Alliance, New York City Parks, and Bronx-based artist Caridad de la Luz, La Bruja, to honor and celebrate the indigenous people, land, and waters of the Bronx. Joining us to tell us more about an upcoming event in the fall to commemorate the Siwanoi Nation in Classic Point Park, we welcome Peppa Tian director Jane Gabriels and spoken word artist and activist Carida de la Luz La Bruja. Hello, ladies, and welcome. Hi. Happy <laughs> August. Yes, we're here. Yes, so we have. You, you know? Well, blessings to you, ladies. I see everybody's looking fabulous, and we're all remaining healthy and safe. We are, we're still here and we're very grateful. And this is um, an amazing opportunity to get back to the land, get back to nature, uh, and to really learn Bronx's history, which I'm you know, born and raised and still live here in the Soundview section of the Bronx and I'm still learning and wanna share the things that I've been learning. Um, with, Jane, with Jane Gabriels of Peppa <laughs> Thank you for being here with us, a la Canada. How's Canada treating you? All good, all good. But you know, once you get into the Bronx, you never quite leave. <laughs> yeah, I love how you always incorporate it. So let's talk, let's share with everyone a little background on Pepetian as well as your role. Yeah, sure. Pepetian was founded in 1983 by artists Marian Soto, Pepon Osorio, and Patty Bradshaw. Um, they did incredible work. They're all award-winning artists. And uh, I was hired in 99 to help them with the first festival they were doing at Ostos. And I've just been working there ever since because of projects like this, how can I leave? Um, there's always something new to learn. And um, I also, I completed a doctorate writing about the Bronx because I wanted to continue con to contribute and also to learn more and to share what I was learning in different ways. Um, and yeah, and then I've been also been inviting more of the artists to be project leads or consultants or co-directors or just get way more involved with the direction of the organization. like. I'm the director, but I'm kind of, I'm working with others to like create really fun and really significant projects that are really trying to move some ideas forward through the Bronx, about the Bronx and, you know, elevate. Oh, lovely. So perhaps we should be referencing you now as Dr. Perdóname. Oh, <laughs> oh gosh, it's so lovely to see both of you. She's a doctor, I'm a doctor. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Let's talk a little bit why the direction of Native American history. Who wants to take can that? Can you answer? hear me? I, well, you, either, you can, either of you can answer. I just, you know, um, Peppa Tian has uh, basically shifted and pivoted its themes according to, I guess, scenarios that are occurring within our, our, our current climate. And so as you opened uh, in saying, uh, Cari, that this is a time for us to get back to nature and our roots and our ancestry, right? And so from what I understand, this project actually has been in development for the past three years. Um, and I understand that you also, Cari, uh, got, got uh, a grant to go and research further. So let's talk a little bit about that. Okay, great. Uh, I won the Jerome Hill Artist Fellowship. Um, and with some of those funds, I traveled to visit Jane in Vancouver and we went up through British Columbia all the way to an indigenous uh, hub of like all indigenous nations. Um, the Haida people, Haida Gwaii. So we went to Haida Gwaii and, and learned how they honor the land, um, their traditions. We saw their sacred lands and all of this. And I've lived here in Soundview my entire life. We're doing all of this. This was last July to return here to the Bronx, Soundview, and learn that I've been living on what was once a Siwanoi village for thousands and thousands of years up until the 1600s. In the 1900s, it was actually um, a village and a, and a sacred burial site where yearly different nations would come to visit and honor their ancestors. And we had started doing this work about two years ago. So we're going into our third, um, indigenous gathering, but only found out last year that this was happening in this exact location. So it's pretty mystical. 
Uh, it's in alignment with, you know, what it is we were in search for. It kind of, if you ever read the book, The Alchemist, it kind of felt like The Alchemist. Like, nice. Oh, that's my favorite book. That's one of my favorite Really? I love that book. Oh, <laughs> well, I felt that way. It's like I had to leave only to return to find out that I was on it the whole time. Nice. Um, so it was called Snackapins. And, you know, I don't know that that's exactly how it was pronounced, but that's how it was written. S-N-A-K-A-P-I-N-S. And if you Google snack of pins, you'll find, you know, plenty of information. I even found photographs of like what was in those, um, the archaeological findings and the, the burial sites and how they were buried and that there were 70 wigwams. It was huge. It was, you know, a massive village right here on Soundview, Leland and Lacombe, right? So that's nice. where the village stood. But on Classen Point is where they had their summer village where they lived during the, you know, the, the warmer months to fish right. and all of those things. And so we want to honor this culture, this tribe, this yeah. nation. <laughs> right, 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 right. right. This, this history, this Bronx right. history that is absolutely, you know, it's, and now that, um, the world It's like rediscovering, is... actually, right? It's kind of like, like you're, you're just saying, it's kind of like, you didn't even realize that you've been living on this, uh, like, sacred land, per se. And, and so it's lovely that you've been able to um, design and create from it, because it's almost like a, a re- creation of something that already exists right and now you're you're actually sharing it with the next generation uh with the hopes that they are going to inquire further and look into their ancestry deeper and um, and so i understand that you're also going to have uh an event uh in the fall and uh you're you're going to uh commemorate and and start marking this land so jane do you want to share the details of, of what kind of yeah, event sure. this is looking like yeah, sure. It was like, you know, we were discovering all this like really beautiful information and, um, you know, just learning, learning the things that we weren't taught, you know, <clears throat> and what can, and just real like, that's kind of significant. And it's like, oh, what can we do? So it's like, well, here's a, here's a simple gesture. And um, we uh, wrote to the New York City Parks and we're going to have a little plaque on a, on a bench. We had to pick which bench. We were like, let's pick that one because it's by itself and make it like a meditative bench. So there'll be a plaque. Um, the engraver is working on it this week, they told me. And it'll be on the bench at some point the fall in the fall. And it's a collaboration between Tepetien with Caridad and the Bronx River Alliance. And with New York City Parks, we've got art organization and individual artist and we've got land and water all collaborating to create this bench and then to plaque on the bench and then just to um to enjoy that moment we want to have a public something probably with caridad and with also another artist we've been collaborating with quite a lot cynthia paniagua to have them do something and maybe roderick bell might show up from bronx river alliance with the canoes like we don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, that's so lovely and so symbolic right a bench something to sit on that you can overlook and just be in in, in the space yeah, yeah. and well, i feel imagine, like you know remember reimagine what was once there by sitting there so it's absolutely meditative and you know to connect yeah and awesome. I feel like these days, it's fun to have something that's like celebratory, you know, it's honoring, but it's also celebrating and, you know, gives us, it's something nice to uh, have in the future. Yeah. And so um, moving forward, right, because this was something that was supposed to have occurred and based on our circumstances, it's been delayed, but it's still going to happen. And it's a really lovely time for it to happen because as we opened, uh, we can close with the importance of communing with nature right now. That's what's happening in our reality. That's really right. True. And, you know, and considering American history, this is real American history. This is history of the land, you know, before uh, uh, colonization. And yes. now, you know, decolonization is something that is being uh, embraced. And this is just in alignment with really understanding what that means. And yeah. our Native American brothers and sisters have suffered so much. And, you know, even again during this pandemic. So it's really important that we celebrate I them. Absolutely. It's important that we get back to our roots and it's another form of artistically in a loving manner of breaking the chain of systemic racism. Thank you both for being here with us, ladies. Woo, great work. Bravo. All right. You guys, once again, to be a contribution with uh, commemorating the Illinois indigenous history of the Bronx, please visit pepatian.org. 
We do have to take a quick break, but when we return, we'll uh, talk about a free COVID-19 writer's workshop. Don't go anywhere.